We are live. Here we go. Y'all, I know y'all ready for this. Let's get ready and start. This is Sandra Show. Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's go. Everyone, and welcome to this is Sandra Show. We want to say happy that holidays to everyone. Y'all make some noise for my band, your band, our band, for the culture. We got John on drums, Luke on guitar, and Chris on keys. Come on, MD. Right here. Here we go. Listen, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Desiree, before you go, mm. I just wanted to talk to you because, oh my gosh, you are truly an inspiration for so many people. The last time you came on the show, you have had a huge transformation since then. Would you please tell our viewers about your weight loss journey? How many pounds did you lose? Oh my goodness. Um, 105. Today. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so you went through a gastric bypass surgery. What was that experience like? Oh, gosh. Um, last resort. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to a point during the pandemic where my health just went crazy. Mm. I had thyroid issues. I had issues with swelling, early onset arthritis, and nothing I did. And I've always been active, as you know, but nothing I yes. did could stop me from gaining weight. Um, and I have three babies and yes. a whole, you know, life that I need to try to sustain. So, yes. um, I had a friend who actually went through gastric bypass. And mm -hmm. so we talked about it a little bit. I researched a lot, spent half a year researching actually. Really? I, I was just about to ask you that question. Like what made you want to go through this process and then who helped guide you? So you had a sure. friend. Sure. I had a friend who had gone through it, who was around a similar weight, similar mm. build, similar height, had C-sections just like I have. Wow. Um, and so I just decided to look into it and learn more about it. And I just wanted to take my life back. I, I couldn't. Well, baby, you took that <laughs> life back. Did she take our life back, y'all? Oh, my goodness. And you know what? It didn't take one note away from you. You, you still sing so beautifully. Thank you. So for our viewers looking to get something done like you have, 
How did you have to prep for something like this? Um, I know it's different depending on what practice you go with, but mm -hmm. for mine, it was a lot of consultation. Mm -hmm. I had to speak to a mental health specialist. They had sure. to clear my mental health before I moved forward. Mm -hmm. um, That's important. Very important. Yes. And then it took uh, a, probably about a month of going through online nutrition courses because I had to change with this practice, I had to change my mindset with yes. how I viewed food and yes. consumption and all of that before I actually was able to go through that. Give me one word prior to how you viewed food. How did you view food? Ooh, um, goodness. Ooh. That is hard. Um, I never overindulged, but maybe necessity mm -hmm. was, was it, and that's still how I view it. Mm -hmm. But I was on the opposite end of the spectrum where I would work so much that I would not eat enough. And so then when so I did So the body eat, was holding sure. on to the calories. So it was worse. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So after you had the surgery done, was there like a particular uh, process you had to go through afterwards to take care of yourself? The surgery is actually pretty non-invasive. Oh. Um, I went in and was out and home the same day. Most really? people are able to go back to work depending on what they do. Um, and at the time I was heavy administra administrative theatrical work. Mm -hmm. So I was back to work within five days. Um, yeah. You went to back to work when? Five days. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So now with all of that, you are still performing. I what am. business are you standing on in 2024? Ooh. Oh, oh goodness business. gracious. Um, still performing um, very much. That's very much still part of what I do. Um, but I am artistic and marketing director for Orlando Fringe. Mm. Um, and that's local to Central Florida. We're almost 33 years established. Wow. We're the one of the longest running theatrical festivals in the yes. US. Yes, tell us a little bit more about Fringe. Okay. okay. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, each May we have a 14 day festival mm -hmm. and we have international, national and local artists come in and be a part of this festival. That is not curated, it's uncensored, it's unjuried. We have a lottery system that's non-biased. We just went through our lottery for next May's festival. Amazing. Um, and it's it's a great time. There's kids, there's a um, kids fringe, so there's offerings for that. There's outdoor stage entertainment mm -hmm. that's free, beer trucks or beer tents, food trucks, um, visual arts. There's there's something for everybody at that festival. Wow. Now, how does someone become a performer on the fringe stage or stages? Uh Networking, um, yes. reaching out to people who are at Fringe, mm -hmm. um, working in the circuit, also coming and watching yes. and talking. The good thing about Fringe is it's one of those things where people meet on the lawn, as we call it, where the beer and the food and all of that mm. is. And you're able to speak to people who have been doing this forever or people who are emerging. Networking. Um, yeah. Now, you just did a huge Halloween show. Tell us about your Halloween show. Oh, what Halloween show did I just Didn't do? Didn't you do a big performance this past October? Oh, Sweeney Todd? Yes! <laughs> Come on now! Come on! Halloween. She's I like, I'm very so literally. busy. I'm so booked and busy. I don't know. What did I do in October? I did. In October? At Peter West End. Um, I was in Michigan doing Lady Day. Yes! And flew home, had two days off, and then went straight into Sweeney Todd rehearsals. That's amazing. Now, how's Lady Day doing? Lady Day's great. Really? Um, that was my fourth time, and I may be reprising it in the new year. That's incredible. Year. Now, uh, Lady Day is a one-woman show that you do? It Tell is. Tell a little um, bit about that. Essentially, there's two players. Mm -hmm. So it is Lady Day, uh, Billie Holiday, mm -hmm. um, and it is one of her last performances set in, very, in a very dingy, dank kind of bar um, mm -hmm. before she passes away. Mm. And the only other player in the show is her accompanist, Jimmy Powers. So wow. it's two people. Jimmy has a few lines, but mm -hmm. mostly it is about 16 songs and monologue after monologue wow. after monologue, but it's very intimate. Um, so I think a lot of people come to see the show mm -hmm. thinking they're going to see someone singing her songs, yes. and they don't realize it is actually someone portraying her, breaking the fourth wall, yes. engaging with the audience, and um, you ultimately see her sort of unravel and fall apart. Yes. And it's uh, it's riveting, it's heartbreaking, but I think it's a very important story. Yes, it is. Um, because it, it tells her perspective and you, all, you often don't see that. And you tell it so well. Thank you. Could you please give us, can you give us like a little bit of your monologue? Oh. Or you want to talk about Christmas? Oh, <laughs> a little bit of a Lady Day monologue? Yes. Oh man. Um, 
I can't think of anything. Oh, I was going to say, because you got the voice. Oh, I think. Break that fourth wall. Oh, Come on in God. here. <laughs> Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Can oh, I come back to it? Yes, we can come it. back. Now, while we're waiting to come back sure. to that, tell me what you're doing for Christmas. For Christmas. <laughs> oh, um, in my, just in my personal life? Yes, are you going to go spend some time with family? Are you I'm cooking? I'm staying. Oh, no. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> no. No, because I cooked for Thanksgiving. No, well, I feel you. We, I, I told you earlier, we just bought a house Yes, uh, this year. congratulations Thank again. You. So we're very much still living out of boxes here and there. So it's going to be a nice, relaxing time at home. And I I, there's you. some surprises for my kids, but I'm not going to say them in case they're watching. That's right. We won't talk <laughs> about it because I know the surprises, kids. Oh, my goodness. But, so everybody's going to be in Florida? Yes. No going out of state or anything no, like that. I no. feel you. So Lady Day. Let's get back to Lady Day. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> See, what happens when I do shows is I try to I, I involve myself and then I dump it until yes. I need it later. But um, let's see, um, monologue or song? You choose. Okay. Um, them that's got <clears throat> shall have, them that's not shall lose. So the Bible says, and it still is news. Mm. Mama may have, and Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. Come on now. That's got his own. You're amazing. Y'all better give it up for Desiree. Thank you so much. Listen, it's time for us to go to break. We're going to be right back. Y'all don't go nowhere because Joshua Simplin is coming up next. Come on. Desiree from to walk off this couch. You're welcome. <laughs> You're so welcome to have a seat there. Yes, and then we're gonna come watch some, take some pictures when Harris gets back. Thank you. All right. Okay, okay. Rashida, okay, so Mrs. Siplin is going to come through the back way and come back out with Joshua. Okay. Okay, I love it. Uh, when Shantae comes back, could you please have him move this teleprompter? I'm reading it, but it's facing that way. So I really need it to come. Thank you so much. That was so cool. Yeah, after I finish singing. So are we live? Are we live on social media? Y'all, was that not amazing? Desiree was so amazing singing for us in the beginning and also doing a little bit of Lady Day. It was absolutely fantastic to sit here and hear, hear that voice. It's almost like being in the room uh, with Billie Holiday. That sound, it's so unique. All right, thank you, Shantae. Oh, I can see, I can see. We hope you all are enjoying the show at home. Please make sure you like, comment, and share. We are headed back into the show right now. We have an amazing guest coming up. Sandra show ladies and gentlemen today we have a remarkable guest who has conquered the fairways and greens with skill dedication and a passion for the game of golf he's not just a player he's a rising star on the PGA tour a force to be reckoned with and someone whose journey through the world of golf has been nothing short of extraordinary y'all please welcome the one and only mr. Joshua Simply. 
Doing great, and I just gotta take a look at these sneakers, y'all. He got some kicks on that's just shining, oh, yes, shining, does. shining, shining, shining. right? <laughs> yes, he does. Look amazing, he's matching the band too. I love it. Wow, so how did you get involved with playing golf, Joshua? Uh, my dad's a former state senator. So you get out, yes, ma'am. Your daddy is a former state senator, that's all right. That's okay. why I got some very powerful parents, yes, you do, yes, yes you do, yes, and they are raising a very powerful son. I say so, indeed, I say so. yes, ma'am. So, how did you find your love? love your passion for the game well so like i said my dad's state senator so i used to go out with him and just ah oh, see now i get the connection yeah exactly dad's out playing golf he's trying, he's trying to learn how to doing play business so, deals exactly so he can play with his constituents so <laughs> I, love it. I used to go out and watch him a little bit uh -huh. he bought me some snoopy clubs and then he put us in this program me and my little brother called the OMYGA, stands for the orlando minority youth golf association ah. and so i grew up in that and um as i continued to grow up in that program they told me that i had a good swing and that had a lot of potential, so that, that uh, really pushed me to work hard. And then I started to enjoy working hard and getting better in the game. So uh, That's just, amazing. Yeah, they yeah. told you you had a good swing, and that was the start of where we are now. Yes, man, right? a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's right. Ta -da! Yes, so when did you decide that you wanted to pursue a professional or, you know, you're in college playing golf uh, and on the PGA Tour? Yes, ma'am. So once I started to realize that I enjoy getting better and enjoy working, I said, okay, I could probably do this for the rest of my life. It'd be pretty cool. So okay. That's kind of like how it pretty much like flourished within myself. Um, that's amazing. Can you believe this is you? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> but, uh, that dude looks good though. That dude does look great, right? <laughs> yes, you got great posture. Exactly. Right? Little. So how much does it cost if someone wants to get on a PGA tour? I'm uh, sure a lot of our viewers, they may have children too. They're interested interested in doing something like this. So, is it an expensive thing to get into? I say it's probably one of the most expensive sports. Get out! You, know, you have like equipment. You have your fitness coach. You got travel. You have food. You have tournament fees. So all that good stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to get on the tour. Mm -hmm. But one of the main ways that um, athletes pursue getting on the PGA Tour is the Corn Ferry. And to qualify for that, it's about 100000 to get through all the stages. You stop. No, I'm being You got serious. some real good parents. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yes, ma'am. Now, you have a huge involvement with Steph Curry. Yes, ma'am. Come on from the Warriors. How has he supported your career? My career? Well, just funding the golf program, giving me somewhere to play, uh, giving me a lot of resources so that I can flourish and just get better every day. That's awesome. Uh, I can't thank him enough. We're truly blessed to have someone like him yes. who cares not only about the game of basketball, but enough to, to uh, fundraise and invest into yes. other black kids so that yes. you know we can continue to show what black people can do in the world of golf. Yes, you better say it again. Yes, That's what's up. Or minorities, not just blacks. Black, black people, Any. minorities, yes, exactly. So what are some challenges about being a golfer? Some challenges? You're officially a golfer. What are some <laughs> of your challenges? Uh, definitely the mental side. You know, mm. In golf, you can't really control a lot. You kind of just have to learn what you can control and just learn how to just focus on that and staying within the game and learn to enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. Golf doesn't really, doesn't really give you a lot, so you have to be patient, learn how to be grateful for every opportunity that you have, and just keep working. Yes, you sound like Emotional such a humble, God. grateful child. <laughs> what a blessing. What yes, a blessing. Now, you brought your mother here. I did, I did. Who has supported you through it all. Let's bring her out. Y'all welcome out to the Lavender Couch, Commissioner Victoria Sipley. Yes! Come on, girl! <laughs> Please! How are you? Excuse me, Joshua. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so good to see you. Please have a seat. Now, you ain't just got a powerful mama, you got a beautiful mama. That's why I get my looks from her. <laughs> you Sorry, gotta stop. Sorry, hey, Daddy! He get his looks from his mama! <laughs> I love it. So handsome, so handsome. It's yes. wonderful to have you here. Thank you for joining Thank me. You. Victoria, as a mother watching your son pursue his dreams on the golf course, what emotions have you had watching him? Oh, on his it's just such a, a, a delightful uh, moment. You know, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to have a front row seat. And I have had, and my husband, we have had that opportunity to get that front row seat. Yes. And so when we see Joshua, now we know 
all of the trials and the yes. tribulations that he had to go through to mm -hmm. get to where he is. And I know he's not done. No, you know, he's not done. So it's so it's just a wonderful thing to, to just have a front row seat. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Now, how do you cope with the highs and lows and what moment <laughs> stands out to you as particularly emotional in his golfing career? Well, I can tell you um, there are definitely highs and lows. Yes. This is one of the highs. <laughs> Look at this ring. Oh, Y'all better get this ring. Look Come at this on. ring. OK, that's a high. So, so that's definitely a high. Yes. But but just seeing him become the young man mm -hmm. um, and just seeing the maturity. Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you, there's so many moments where I said, wow, that's my son. But right? I can tell you, um, yeah, this. that's my baby. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> let's talk about the college that you're going to. We said you were collegiate, but tell everybody what school you're attending. I go to the illustrious Howard University. You better say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> the illustrious Howard University. The illustrious H Howard U? University. You <laughs> see you. Yes, That's what's up. Yes, I love it. Are you planning on pledging? Uh, even if I was, I couldn't tell you. Oh, Come on. <laughs> that's a good answer. You have taught him very well, y'all. Yeah. So, Joshua, I know that you've won several tournaments throughout the years. What does that feel like? Uh, I mean, obviously, it feels great uh, for me, not only for myself, but for all the people who supported me, for my yes. parents, yes. and people who invest in me and believe in me. Yes. Uh, it means the most when I can, you know, show them that all the support is is coming to work. So uh, it feels very satisfying that all the work you put in is is finally proving off and showing out. So, yes. So it's great. Show up to show out. Yes, ma'am. That's what he does. That's right. So what is it like being a part of a golf team that is currently ranked the number one HBCU team in the whole country? Uh, I mean, it's great for sure, but... You so laid back on that. It's the whole country, Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing about it is because we know we're number one. We know we got people chasing after us, so we can't really bask in the moment. We got to keep pushing come. for it. Did y'all hear that? He they said they know they number they one and they just can't sit there and bask in it. Yes, you have to stay ready, right? Exactly. I love that. Yes, I love that. So what kind of impact would you like to make on the world of golf? Uh, I just want to show like little kids who don't really think they can do it, that, that they can. Just got to stay patient, believe in themselves. And I just want to like show God's work through me and my game and just show that, you know what I'm saying, if you just trust in him, he's going to provide for you. He's going to make a way. You just got to just stay patient and believe in him. And that's oh, really what my I want to be. That's yes, powerful. Yes, now, Victoria, children do not come with any kind of instructions, whatever. No. How did y'all manage to take him from the cradle to here with this level of success? Well, I can tell you. And respect. Yes, I can tell you, you know, you got to have the fear of God, right? Yes. You got to instill that in them. Mm -hmm. um, you got to give them boundaries. Yes. You got to let them understand we're in this and we're not giving up. I know it's hard, but perseverance, mm -hmm. you got to keep going. Yes. You know, and even if it doesn't seem like everything's going your way, that's okay. But you always have to look at, hey, your blessing is right around the corner. Yes. You might not have might. it today. Come on. But if you give up, you'll never have you'll it. You'll never have so it. So you got to keep pushing. You got to keep believing in yourself. Come on. I told my child, I said, no, it doesn't matter who believes in you, who has faith in you. As long as you believe in yourself, hey, it's okay. That's but once enough. you stop believing in yourself, it's a wrap. It's a, I love it. So I told him that's what you got to do. Now, Joshua, with all of this that your yeah. mama and daddy done told you, what do you hold on to when you were away at college mm -hmm. and it's like you may be going through some things? Yes, what do you hold on to? Like, I know my mom and dad done told me this. I got this. Um, I mean, I just, those words that she says for real, just mm -hmm. stay patient and trust in God. Because mm. you, I mean, you can't really do it yourself. So I got this far because of him. Hey Amen. So you better I, come on exactly. now. If I got this far, why can't I go farther? You can. Yes, exactly. Now, when you walked out, I forgot to say sock passe. Oh, no, not boule. No, <laughs> boule. Okay. Because you are originally from Haiti. Yes. You do not know a life of easy. You worked hard to get yourself here. You and your husband have done such a fantastic job to see where you came from to where you are and now where your children are. Right. What do and you I, have to say? And I've taken my children to Haiti so they can understand how blessed they are. Yes. And how they just have to 
when they get to a level where they can give back, you got to give back. You got to. You got to give back. So I, 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 I don't hold my past. I don't hide it, right? A lot of times we hide what we've been through Correct. trying to protect our children. Correct. But I want them to understand that the struggle is real out there. Yes. And if I can make it, if your dad can make it, you can make it too. Amen. You have been set up to move forward yes, in, with grace and with all the love that you need to be who you are. Thank y'all so much for joining me Thank today. This you. has been such an honor to sit here and talk to you. I know we're going to see you on the pro golf greens <laughs> as well. Oh, Hello, right. Right? right? Of course. What's up in 24 for you? Uh, just waking up every day, just appreciating God for each day. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> and, we, and that's right. That with that right. being said, yo, <laughs> thanks for watching. Yo, Chris. What's up, Get Thank y'all for coming so much. Come on. Thank y'all for coming. Just kidding. Send that QR code, code at the bottom of your, your screen. screen. Because we've all got so much more exclusive content Thank for you at home. You. Right here, only on the Sassandra Show. And again, that's only on Afro TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 16. 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't go nowhere. Stick around. Put that remote down. We got plenty more great entertainment for you right here again, only on Afro TV.